All right. We're going to start off today talking about a few definitions before we get into some specific new angles that we want to talk about when lines intersect. And so a big thing we're going to talk about in this unit are parallel lines. Now, hopefully you already know what these are, but they're lines that don't intersect. They'll look like this because if they keep on going, these lines will never, ever, ever cross. Um, you note that they're parallel by putting these arrows on them. That tells you that this line is parallel to this one. And if you have a couple sets of parallel lines, you might have a double-headed arrow um, to say, okay, this line's parallel to this one, and then the ones with just the single arrows are parallel to each other. Now, we say parallel lines are parallel, called parallel if they're in the same plane, meaning these are both on the plane of the paper, and so they are parallel. And that's different from skew lines, because skew lines are kind of like parallel, but in different planes, meaning lines that don't intersect, but in different planes. And so the easiest way to think of this is like a box. Imagine this is a box. And so this is along the back upper corner of the box, that line, and the right-hand side of the box, that line, they will not intersect because you've got the one, one going this way and the other one's on a completely different plane going this way. And so they're not going to intersect, but we don't call them parallel. Special word called skew. So think of this one as parallel in 3D but not parallel because they're not necessarily going the same direction. They just don't touch. So I'm going to say, instead of saying parallel in 3D, I'm going to say don't touch. That's called skew lines. And then parallel planes. We've sort of already talked about this, but this is planes that don't intersect. And so this would be like the top and the bottom of the box. They're never, ever going to touch. Planes that don't intersect. So what could we call some of these? So WZ and QW. So WZ and QW. Those are perpendicular. Um, now, this is making a huge assumption that this is all right angles going on in here. But compare that with are they parallel or skew? SY and WX. SY is back here, and WX is right here. So if you extended these, this one's going to keep going backwards. This one's going to keep going up, and so those are never, ever going to cross. They're in different planes. This one's on the plane of the back of the box. This one's on the plane of the side of the box. Or this one's also in the, the side of the box here. But So these are called skew. So hopefully you can tell that those are never, ever going to intersect. All right, WZ and XY. WZ, so we're talking the top front corner, and XY. So those are in the same plane of the top of the box, and so they're still not going to cross, but those are, because they're in the same plane, we call those parallel. And plane WQR, again, remember we use three letters, so W, Q, and R. So that is like the front of the box. Unless you see it popping out at you, then it would be the back of the box. So WQR is that. And SYT, SYT is the back of the box, again, unless you see, are seeing it backwards. Those planes are parallel. The back and the front of the box are parallel to each other. And then RQT, RQT, which is the bottom, and WQR, WQR, so that's the front of the box. Those are perpendicular to each other. So planes can also be perpendicular to each other. Imagine that you turn the box sideways. WQR would be that front of the box turned sideways and RQT would be the bottom of the box, and it would look like this. And so that's why those are parallel. This is the side view. All right, so now onto some special angles that are formed. So when we have two lines, 
and they are intersected by what we call a transversal. T-R-A-N and all that. It's a fancy word for a line that crosses two other lines. Um, especially in this case. So, we've got special angles. First one of which is going to be corresponding angles. Corresponding, the best definition I can think of is that they are in the same corresponding corner of the intersection. So, notice how 1 is in the top left corner. So, angle 1 is corresponding in the same top left corner is angle 5. And 7. Angle 7 and bottom left corner, bottom left corner, so angle 4. We've got angle 8. Also angle 8 is in the bottom right, so angle 3 is in the bottom right. And So hopefully you get the picture. Um, angle 2 and angle 6 are the other ones. So corresponding angle, same corresponding corner. Now corresponding is a word I use quite frequently, but maybe you don't use it as often. But so when they're in the same corner, corresponding corner of the intersection. Next one, alternate interior. Now, by definition, I think it's a fairly good description of what's going on. Interior, what we're talking about is the interior of these two lines. Interior, in between, the inside of the two lines. And so, and then alternate, meaning alternating sides. And so alternate interior, let's pick angle 4 because it's on the interior. Alternate interior with 4 would be angle 6 because it's on the opposite side. And alternate interior with angle 3 because 3 is on the inside is angle 5. So I say inside and opposite for alternate interior. So we have alternate interior and we all have alternate exterior. I say alternate exterior is outside and opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate exterior, here's what I mean. This is the exterior and this is the exterior. Because we are on the outside of the two lines, the outside of it. So alternate exterior, so let's pick angle 1 is on the outside, and so alternate exterior, the opposite side of the transversal, is 8. So angle 1 and angle 8. And notice that we don't ever, we have to go to the other line that we're talking about, so we don't relate the angles here, because we already know how angle 1 and angle 2 are related. We've called that a linear pair. And angle 1 and angle 3, we've called those vertical angles. And so we've already related these to each other, so we're relating this to this. Um, also, angle 2 and angle 7. And finally, you have ones that are called same side interior. Now, other people call them co-interior, but basically co means you're sharing, same side means they're on the same side. So interior, they're on the inside, so just like our alternate interior, they're on the inside, but that they're on the same side of the transversal this time. So angle 4 is on the inside, and same side interior with it is angle 5. And angle 3, and angle 6. Same side interior. So you're going to want to get used to corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, and same side interior. Be, be okay with, with finding those. So we've got a picture just to practice real quick to see if we've got it down. And so angle 3 and angle 9. Angle 3 and angle 9. Angle 3 and angle 9 are, if you ignore this one right now because they're comparing these, so they're on the inside and they're opposite sides, so that's alternate interior angles. So I'm just going to shorten it like that. 5 and 13. 5 and 13. They're in the same corner, and so those are corresponding 
angles. 4 and 10. 4 and 10. So they're on opposite sides of the line and they're on the inside. So alternate interior angles. 5 and 15. 5 and 15. So they are on the outside and opposite side. So alternate exterior so they're on the outside. Finally, angle 7 and angle 14. Angle 7 and angle 14. So they're on the same side and they're on the inside, so we call those same side interior or co-interior. So those are the angles you need to know, those four special angles. Now, next time we'll talk about well, what happens if these lines are parallel some special stuff, so a lot of congruent angles, and so that's what we're talking about next.